Hey guys, I'm going to share this word with you. Um, something that the Lord has given me. He showed me this in the past and I've actually done a video on this as well. But I need to remind you all and just pose this, this question as well. Have you ever been in a church where you found that certain times of year, certain amount of people will die? This may not happen in all churches, but those of you that you've been in ministries where certain times of the year, <laughs> it seems almost quarterly, people will just die in that ministry. My brothers and sisters, the reason why this is happening in some of these places, now sometimes it's just people's time to go. But when the Lord opens up your eyes and it just seems like a certain time of year, people just dropping like flies. My brothers and sisters, the reason why it is, is because there's a covenant, a demonic covenant that's been made and sacrifices are being made. Mm-hmm. In churches where the most dangerous thing, the most dangerous place you and I can ever be is a place that seems to be a church, but in fact, there's a lot of, um, there's a lot of gray areas, a lot of things that they say is not, it's not valid. For example, they're teaching you out of the Bible. They're teaching you the word that you're singing and talking about God. All right. But then there's certain things they'll tell you is not necessary. They will tell you speaking in tongues is devilish and demonic. A sign that you are in, a sign that you're in a place where you are being fed strange foods spiritually and you're at a table set by demons that you're eating defiled things and you're being taught defiled things is when they will preach certain things, but then there are other things they'll tell you it doesn't matter or certain things they're neutral about. Let me tell you something. An indication that you are being fed from the table of demons, no matter how long you've been in this church, no matter how much you look up to them, is when they omit certain truths, when they tell you certain things are not necessary. Okay, so what did I say? They will tell you the Holy Spirit is no longer necessary. You don't need the Holy Spirit. That's from the old days. Even though when Jesus, when Jesus, before Jesus ascended after his crucifixion, correction he before told the crucifixion, his disciples that the Comforter was going to come. The Comforter was going to lead us and guide us into all truth. To bring to our remembrance everything that's been said by God. And he will be with us forever. Mm -hmm. But despite this, they will tell you it's foolishness. They will try to tell you, those of you who have the gift of tongues, speaking in another spiritual tongue, they will tell you that is garbage and that is devilish. And I'm here to tell you that in the book of Mark, it tells you that when the Pharisees spoke against the Lord or spoke against or spoke against the things of God. OK, when the Lord, through the Holy Spirit, was casting out a devil, they said he cast out devils by the devil. But of course, he's doing things by the Holy Spirit. Immediately after that, the Lord called them over to himself and he corrected them. If I'm casting out Satan by Satan, then who do you cast out um, spirits by? And he said, blasphemy will never be forgiven. Everything will be forgiven. If you speak against the son, it will be forgiven you. But if you speak against the Holy Spirit in any way, it will never be forgiven. Be careful of places where they're trying to tell you that people that are, when people are doing deliverance or anything like that, they're doing it by the power of Satan. Places that teaches you this stuff, they are already damned because the Bible tells you that if you dare to say this, whoever speaks against the Holy Spirit, 
who blasphemes the Holy Spirit, it will never be forgotten. It will never be forgiven them. And it tells you further down why, why he told that, why he said that to them. Because they said that he's casting out a devil by a devil. So they they categorize the Holy Spirit as being demonic. So when you're in places where they tell you demonic tongues, and demon, even though it does exist, but meaning there are people that will be doing things by an unclean spirit that's trying to mimic the Holy Spirit. But this is not what they're talking about. They are just in general saying the Holy Spirit is a thing of all. This is garbage. This is foolishness. They're casting out by a devil. Oh, this tongue is demonic. When you hear these things, these teachings, you're in the house of Baal. You are being, you're being fed demonic delicacies. <clears throat> Another thing. <sighs> Holy Spirit, which one should I talk about first? They'll tell you you don't need to be baptized. Now, guys, when you're saved, even if you're not baptized yet, you are saved. Okay? Because there's people who get saved and they accept the Lord and there's no water in their country. All right? But if you have water and opportunity, do this. But churches will tell you, you don't need to be saved. Baptized. Look at the thief on the cross. But these were extenuating circumstances. There are people who accept the Lord. God gives them an opportunity to accept the Lord. They are about to die and they accept Jesus Christ. To some, y'all say, oh, that's not fair, but we're not God. They didn't get a chance to be baptized. Some cannot be baptized. They are in, they're on tubes and everything in the hospital. They're in countries where there are there is no water anywhere. All right? But this is not what we're talking about. You are saved regardless. You are saved. However, if you have the opportunity to be baptized and you're just, and the church has a pool and the church has means, have the, the funds to even go and rent out the Y or take you right to a little lake or a beach side or a river or just take a trip to go to a, a place where there's water, free water and baptize. And they're telling you, oh, we don't need to do that because the thief on the cross was, um, he wasn't baptized. When you're in a church that wants you to follow the example of the thief on the cross and not the savior on the cross who was baptized and after he raised up from the dead before he ascended into heaven, he commanded and told his disciples to go preach the gospel, telling people about the Lord, baptizing people in the name of the Father, the Son, the Holy Spirit. You're in the house of devils. Places that tell you you don't need it. And they got plenty of water and opportunity. Another thing, places where they're telling you, once you're saved, you're always saved. A place that tells you that no matter what you do, you're going to heaven. I'm here to tell you, you're in a house of devils. That is not the truth, guys. Don't let people fool you with a scripture that doesn't say that, but can be twisted. Read your Bible, read it all, and you will see what Jesus says about sin, what happens to people who are in sin. Please don't let, fool, don't let your sin and the things that you want to do fool you. Don't let, because you really don't want to try to live that clean life fool you guys. People that's telling you, once you're saved, you're always saved. It's okay. Places where they give you all this room for sin, you're in the house of devils. And so when you enter into these places, your eyes are going to be opened up. There are things that you're going to discover. There are things that you're going to see. There are things that God's going to show you. You're going to you're, you're going you're gonna to hear them teach something that you know just it doesn't seem right, but they're going to talk and talk. Remember, Satan spoke to Eve and talked her out of all that she was given right in that garden. And because she got poisoned, then she went and poisoned her husband. And so they lost everything. Satan knows how to speak. Remember, Satan knows scripture. He knows how to speak. 
He spoke to the Lord Jesus in Matthew chapter four in the wilderness. He knows scripture. So they're going to twist it and it's going to sound right. And depending on the condition of your heart, right? You're going to flow with it, especially if it's what you want to do. Those of you, you know better, but because the majority around you is fun with it and you don't want to be the stick in the mud, so to speak, you'll accept it. And before you know it, after a while, you find yourself believing it because it's a spiritual infiltration, spiritual tainting and contamination. When you find people that want to tell you all the, another thing, when you're in a church and all you're hearing is good stuff, okay, all they're telling you about is heaven and promises and whatever, and they never really preach about repentance and sin, you're in a house of devils, no matter how nice it is, no matter who it is. I'm going to tell you why. If you went into a hospital and all they told people was good news, because you know what? I don't want you to be sad. I don't want you to worry about anything. Just believe you don't, even though the doctor who knows the diagnosis, even though they can read your diagnosis, they can, they, they're asking you about all your symptoms, the blood test shows along with your symptoms and your complaints and the, and the length of time you've had it. They know according to the medical books, which would be the word of God, they know that this means you have this, this sort of, this is the, the illness you have. Well, rather than treat you, would you want the doctor to look at you and say, oh, no, everything is fine. You probably just have some, you know, some viral thing going on or just a, a little cold. Just keep drinking plenty of water, eat lots of fruit. And yeah, it should go away. Would you want that? Would you want to go in a hospital where you need a major operation, but they tell you, you know what? No, no, nothing's there. All's good. Just have a positive mindset. Everything's going to be fine. Drink plenty of orange juice. And oh yeah, all you got to do is apply a little bit of butter to that spot. It should be okay. Yet that's going on in the body of Christ. They're only giving you good news, happy news. All you're getting is candy. All you're getting is cake and desserts. But nobody, and, and, and all you're hearing about is, is faith and holding on and living right and by that it means doing good deeds, doing good stuff. God is going to come and get you soon. But no one is teaching you about sin and repentance. No one's talking about sin and repentance. Or they're only going to talk about certain things, but they're not going to go too far. So imagine going to a hospital where all, all we deal with is common colds. We don't get into the deep things here. We don't get into deep situations. Ah, oh, we don't want to do that. We let's keep we want this to be the happy hospital. Hmm? Sunnyside Medical Center. Would you be going there? Okay, guys. So what's happening? This is an, I'm giving you a few key things. The Lord may speak to you individually and give you even more stuff. Okay, because each one of us, God gives us a little more. There may be more that you realize and you can probably tell me about. And so what happens is when you're in these places, don't think that, oh, you are, you know, you're good because you're not the one that's actually doing this. When you're in these churches where you see people getting up in the pulpit in what I call stanking outfits, the praise team look like the skeezer team going up into the pulpit, wearing all these funky outfits First lady preaching with her shoulders out, okay? Plumber's crack on her chest, doing all these different things. Men in these tight jeans, okay? Up there just bulging and popping and all of this stuff. And it, you know, you can definitely see everything that you don't need to be seeing. When you're in these churches and it's very carnal and they're teaching you things and that's ungodly. And if you're in your word, you're going to see what's true. The most dangerous place you could be at, guys, is a place where people are claiming to be of God while they are changing some things and they are tweaking some things. These are customized churches, customized places where they still want to handle the holy things of God while living however they want to live. Remember, Aaron's sons did this. They were still handling the holy things of God while they were they were doing things that they should not be doing. And you see their end. 
It's dangerous. And so what happens is when you're in these places, when God opens your eyes, but because the majority is going along with it and not, oh, you love everybody so much, you and your family and your house, because you're in covenant, everything tied to you, you will find that you're going to be in covenant with an unclean spirit. And so what happens is there is a time because these pastors are living a certain way. Many of these leaders are living a certain way. They're feeding you this garbage. What happens is you'll find a certain time of year, people will start to pass away. Just like that. People will start to pass away. In Matthew 21, Jesus gives the parable of the, the two brothers i believe that they are and we shut the store and what happens is the first brother the father goes to him and he says go into the field and go do the work and then he says to him yes sir i will do it but then he doesn't do it and then there's a second one who he goes to him and tells him, I'm sorry, he speaks to the first one and says, go into the field and do it. Go do this work. And he says, I'm not going to do the work. But then he repents. He realizes he's wrong. He repents and does go to do the work. But then you find that one. He goes to the second person and says to him, go do the work in the field. And he says, yes, I will do the work in the field, but does not do the work. Which is worse? The one who says that he will do it and doesn't. And that's what you're finding that's going on in the churches, guys. That this is very, very dangerous. Churches, gatherings, whether it's informal or not, or even you don't even have to be in a church. Some of you, you're in, on, on, in and you know, you're just doing things on platforms or uh, you're doing churches in your homes or you're just living. You're saying you're a believer. You're saying you've answered the call, but you're not doing the work of God. You know, versus somebody, you're worse than the person that's saying, I'm not going to serve God at all because they stay not fooling with the holy things of God. But what's going on in many churches is that people are that why these places are very dangerous and why so many people are dropping like flies in them. OK, in certain times of year is because these men and women who are claiming to be of God, they are they are handling the things of God with unclean hands, unclean hearts, and they're not repenting. They're just handling the things of God. They're saying, I'm a Christian, I'm a believer, I'm a child of God, and they are not doing the things that God told them to do. They're doing what they want to do. And so what happens, my brothers and sisters, is that individuals like these, they will now draw other people like them. Carnal people is going to come into the church. I forgot who I heard this say, uh, a preacher said this. When you have to use carnal means to bring people into your church, you're going to have to keep things carnal to keep them there. And so you're going to find more and more people like them is going to come into the church. And this is and come into their gatherings and their settings. And this is why you will find that you are out of place. That's where the separation comes in, where certain people can go to lunch and hang out after church because they want the carnal folks. After they in church, they're going up to go turn up somewhere, smoking drinking watching carnal stuff or going to meet up at somebody's house to to chill and all these different things and some of you you go to church and you leave church and you go into sin because you're under that influence the reason why you cannot get breakthrough is because you're in a church where they promote sin you're in a church where they got hoes ministering yes i said it harlots ministering you're in a church where the pastor is struggling with sin you're in the you're in the church where the first lady is hot in the tail you're in the place where the first lady is jealous they have this thing going on petty catty games are being played and because you are tied to it by covenant you go all the time you are in agreement you're eating from the table of demons in your personal life you find that you are jealous you might be catty you might be petty you can't get your flesh under subjection you can't get relieved from the things that's tormented you in what you're watching and what you're doing. Why? Because you're in covenant with them. And so what happens at the appointed time, these demons and devils, I'm not saying that these pastors know that people are going to die, but people think, oh, people just passed away. No, these were people that at some point, because the altar is set 
for Baal, the devil. These demons will come in and take souls. This pastor, he's getting everything. The church is growing. These, you know, little things are going on in his life, things that he wants because he's serving the devil, because he has bowed down to the prince to the prince of this world, he's getting all the glory and all the, the gifts and all the things that he wants. He's getting the glories of this world. He's getting the kingdom living kingdom now that Satan talks about all the glory and the kingdoms of this world will I give to you if you bow down. Well, because they have bowed down, they're getting what they want, whether it's in their personal life, maybe it may not be on a big scale, but they want a big church little by little. It'll happen, right? Maybe they want certain things personally in their life because they're in covenant, they will get it but what happens is the enemy is coming for souls so you find during certain times of year people will die things will begin to happen marriages will be infiltrated all types of stuff is going on because you get nothing for free from the devil and these people that die know they're not innocent because when you're covered under the blood of jesus you people that's not just going to be able to this Satan can't just come get you, but it's people that they refuse to check out the word of God for themselves. They refuse to turn to the Lord. They refuse to have, they trust in man more. So when you trust in man more, you're subject to the elements of darkness. You're making them your covering. You're making them your protection. When you make man your covering, I'm here to tell you, you're setting yourself up for a demonic infiltration because they're covering you with their own mantle. They're covering you with their own demonic principalities and powers. I'm here to tell you that. And I'm talking about these carnal, carnal people that's in the church. So when you're saying, I need your covering, my brothers and sisters, there's nothing wrong with us praying for each other. There's nothing wrong with us holding each other up, but there is no covering that can come from anybody that that supersedes God's. I don't need man's covering, but you can pray for me. You can hold me up as long as you are a clean vessel. I don't want any dirty vessel praying for me because your prayers will not be of God. And so what's happening because people are so caught up in man and getting their covering, then they're getting the fallout that comes from the power of darkness. And because maybe God showed them some things, God told them that they needed to leave. God told them they need to remove themselves and they disobeyed. They hesitated. They were going to do it, but they let their wife talk them out of it. They were going to do it, but they let the husband talk them out of it. They were going to do it, but the kids love the ministry so much. They were going to do it, but then I'm trying to tell you, Holy Spirit, thank you whenever God starts to speak to your heart and God starts to show you things within a ministry let's say for example this is a church that they never do altar calls at the end they never do anything like that when God begins to show you the stuff you're going to find one or two Sundays they start to do altar call when God begins to show you things and open up your eyes to things and you're getting ready to, you're making it up in your mind that, yes, I'm going to follow God. All of a sudden, they will start to call you and, oh, you know what? I'm thinking of placing you in this position within the ministry. I'm thinking of doing this and I'm thinking of doing that because the enemy wants you to stay there because those spirits are aware that you're getting the truth and they don't want you to find, they don't want you to come to truth. They want your soul. It's not that they care. They want to destroy destroy you. And then sometimes you'll find all of a sudden you're not fitting in no more. They want you out of there because the spirits recognize you. They see what's going on. God is changing your heart. You will be a problem here. You don't fit in here. You need to go. You bring conviction. You make us think about things. I don't like your little face. It looks like it's too much into God. So these are the things that will happen. But my brothers and sisters, a lot of people that are dying in ministries, the tragedies and the things that going on in people's lives sometimes guys sometimes is when you're in these type of churches there is a quota that must be filled and it's going to be with souls i encourage you to develop a relationship with the lord you all may say all oh, this is too far-fetched no the bible tells us over and over again to remove ourselves from unclean men people who are quick to go to mischief people who have evil within their hearts people who who shed innocent blood to depart from evil. Do not get in the counsel of the ungodly. Do not stand in the way of sinners. Do not sit in the seat of the scornful. That means not only sitting, relaxing, and being at, at rest and at peace with them, but sitting in their pulpits, sitting in, sitting in their pews. 
The Lord is showing us these things. He's telling us, but these things are spiritually discerned. If you're walking in darkness and sin, you're not going to see it because you fit right in because you are carnal too. You want to be there. You don't want to be in the church that's going to tell you that you can't keep living with your boyfriend. You can't keep living with your girlfriend. You don't want to be in the church that's telling you you shouldn't be having sex before marriage. You don't want to be in those places. You don't want to be in that environment. You don't want to hear that. You want to hear that you can, as long as you have a plan to get married, as long as you're doing good things, as long as you're looking at the fact that they're teaching you good sound word. Yes, Satan will give you good sound word. Did not did not Satan give the Lord Jesus good sound word in the wilderness? What he was speaking was truth, but the spirit in which he was speaking it and what he wanted in exchange for what he was saying was compromise. And that's what a lot of churches are doing. They're giving you word. They're giving you good word. Oh, it will make you cry. Oh, it brings break, quote unquote breakthrough, but you realize you're compromising something greater. And if you don't remove yourself and if you're not filled with the word and if you're not obeying the hindrance of the Holy Spirit, you're going to fall prey to these people. You're going to fall prey to these demonic spirits. And the worst thing more than anything is to hear depart from me. The worst thing is to find yourself leaving your body and you think you're going to heaven and you're not. To think you will be received by the angels of God to take you to a place of rest and you're being received by darkness that's going to take you somewhere deep in the earth or into outer darkness. All this time, you're going to know in your mind why you're there. And it's going to be reminded. You're going to remember faster than ever. Your memory is going to be so sharp because you're in spirit form. How often God tried to warn you. If you don't believe me, read your Bible. A lot of people like to argue with you and they don't read their Bible. Don't go in there and go find one thing. Or read it page by page. People don't like to do that. Stop finding isolated scripture, guys. Read your Bible. See what the Lord says. Ask the Holy Spirit to open up your understanding so you can comprehend scripture. And those of you that God has been speaking to you, obey him, guys. Timing is everything with obedience. Oh, I'll obey God next week. Uh-uh, it's disobedience. I'll obey God in the next hour. No, when you do it, you're walking in disobedience. When God tells you to do something, do it. He knows exactly why you need to move at that exact time. What would have happened is Moses' mother... When it was delayed in her heart that she needed to make a basket and put him in there, she decided she just want to hold on to him a few more days. What might have happened then? Timing is everything. Timing is everything. All right, guys, I pray this makes sense. Be blessed.